In the previous module we said the deadweight loss from a distortionary tax is equal to the difference between the actual tax revenue that we raise from the distortionary tax and the amount that we could have raised without making consumers worse off had we not distorted prices. We also identified how we can see T in this consumer diagram. We said that on the after-tax budget we have to identify our optimal bundle once we know how much the consumer consumes of the tax good after the tax is imposed, we can see how much money is left over for other consumption, and we can read off of the before-tax budget how much in other consumption the consumer would have had left over had she not paid her taxes. That difference is the tax revenue the government collects from this consumer. Now we want to ask, where in this picture can we see L, the amount that we could have raised had we not distorted prices and made the consumer no worse off. So what we're imagining is a scenario where we look at the before tax budget and we find out what indifference curve the consumer ended up on under the distortionary tax. And we ask, how much could I have moved this budget without distorting the slope and made the consumer no worse off than she ended up being on the magenta budget? So think of me coming to your house and saying, look, we'll get rid of the distortionary tax. So we'll go back to the original green budget. But in exchange, I'm going to take cash away from you. And I'm going to keep taking cash away from you until you're just as happy as you were under the distortionary tax. Well, when I take that cash away from you, I'm shifting this green budget in, in a parallel way. I'm not changing the slope. And I'll keep doing that as long as you're still happier than you were under the distortionary tax. Once I get to a point of tangency, I'll have reached the most that I could possibly take from you in cash. If I took any more cash from you, I'd make you worse off than you were on the magenta budget under the distortionary tax. So now we have two parallel budgets here. The difference between those, the vertical difference, which we can measure in dollars since we're measuring dollars on the vertical axis, is how much cash I took away from you. So it's this difference here. That's L. But we can measure that anywhere as a distance between those two budgets because the two budgets are parallel. Since they're parallel, that distance is the same everywhere. So now we can put that blue line into this picture. When we put it in this picture, we're going to take the green line, we're going to shift it in and keep shifting it until we reach a point of tangency with the magenta budget. I mean with the magenta indifference curve. So we'll end up somewhere here with parallel blue and green budgets and this as the point of tangency. And we've said that we can measure L the amount of cash we actually took from you as the vertical distance between these two parallel budgets, which we can measure at any point, including here so we can compare it to T. So it's this distance here. This distance L. And we see that L is bigger than T which means that there's a deadweight loss. That deadweight loss is the difference. This difference here is then the deadweight loss. So where does that deadweight loss come from? Well, to begin to understand that, we need to understand and see that something is hiding in this picture. And what's hiding is that Cayman Island picture that we introduced when we first introduce substitution effects. So let me just pull that picture out. So here we have X1, dollars of other goods. Our 
um, after tax budget and our blue after lump sum tax budget. Well, those budgets look exactly like the taxi budget and the rental car budget from the Cayman Island example. And then we have an indifference curve that's tangent to both of those budgets. So there's a tangency here and another tangency here. And we see that the blue line passes underneath this magenta tangency, underneath the magenta tangency here, which is what's creating the difference between L and T. That's what's creating the deadweight loss. So it's because of that substitution effect that the deadweight loss emerges. If that still doesn't convince you, we can go to the extreme case of perfect complements. When we have perfect complements, we've removed all degrees of substitutability, and we've removed all substitution effects. So if we do the exact same analysis, but this time we assume that we have the tastes of perfect complements, We would start with our before-tax budget, put in our after-tax budget, find our optimal bundle on the after-tax budget to identify T, and this time we'd have an indifference curve that looks like this because it's perfect complements. We'd say that this is the amount of X1 that you consume after the tax, which leaves you this much over other consumption. Had you not paid your taxes, you would have had this much left over if you consumed X1. The difference is what went to the government. Now I come to your house and I say, I'm going to get rid of the magenta budget, I'm going to get rid of the distortionary tax, and instead I'm going to take cash from you. So we're going to shift the green budget in and we're going to keep shifting it until we make you just as happy as you are under the distortionary tax, until we get to this indifference curve. So we keep shifting it down, and we're going to have to stop at this point. If I shift it any further, I'm going to make you worse off than you are on the magenta indifference curve. But now we see that the blue line crosses at the tangency. It doesn't pass underneath it. And that vertical distance is the lump sum tax. It's a vertical distance between these parallel lines. We can measure it here. And so now the lump sum tax, the most we could take from you in cash without distorting the prices and not making you any worse off, is exactly what we raised under the distortionary tax. So the deadweight loss goes away when we remove, when we remove the substitution effect by making this perfect complement. The bottom line is that the deadweight loss from taxes, from distortionary taxes, on the consumer side emerge solely because of substitution effects.